Alpha Life Bible Church will be a moment of transformation. Today, by the grace of the Lord, we shall listen to our pastor, General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumonyi. We are going to be blessed. It is my wish that you call your family to come and listen to you as our pastor is blessing you with his holiness message. Amen. Bless. Tonight, as we come to our session of revival, we are picking the message that shall be given tomorrow morning. And then we're bringing it to tonight. Otherwise, I'll just be sitting down and there'll be nothing to do. I'm talking to you on the divine pattern for new life in Christ. Very witchy message from the word of God. Divine pattern for new life in Christ. To start with, we have the word pattern. The word pattern is like a model. And you use that model, you use that pattern to reproduce another species, another kind, another person, another life. And then it's a divine pattern. We're not talking about a human pattern, a cultural pattern, a traditional pattern, a private society pattern. This is divine. And it comes from God. Divine pattern. And then for a kind of life, not just for every Dick and Harry, it's for new life in Christ. And so please understand, everything we're referring to today, we're making it center on the Lord Jesus Christ because he actually is the pattern. But I'm going to show you something in the scriptures in Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses. That's great. The Lord spoke unto, unto who? Until the Lord speaks to you. All that we say here will mean nothing. Until the Lord speaks to you, your life will not amount to much. It is at the time you open your ears, you open your mind, you open your heart, and the Almighty God from heaven, He concentrates on you, and then directly speaks to you. And I pray you'll hear His voice at this time. And now in verse 9, in verse 8, and let them make me a sanctuary. That I may dwell among them. When the Lord spoke to Moses, he said, here is the message I have for you. And here is the message I'm passing through you. I'm passing it on to the children of Israel. They'll make me a sanctuary, a temple a tabernacle, a house of worship. And then he says, there is a reason for that, that I may dwell among them. What a revelation. That the sanctuary is not just that we'll come together, fellowship together, that's good, to come together and to fellowship together and just to enjoy the friendship, the interaction, and the relationship with one another. That's great. But there's something greater here. God said, you will make a tabernacle for me. You'll build a temple for me. You're going to build a sanctuary and you'll build it for me so that I will dwell among you. Now verse 9. According to all that I showed thee. After the pattern of the tabernacle, the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. He said, Moses, I'm showing you the pattern. And when you go back, always remember, Moses, you are not building this for yourself. You are not building this for your brother Aaron. You are not building this for the children of Israel. You are building it for me. And I've shown you my pattern and you will build according to that pattern what a revelation that those of us who are involved in building the church the habitation of god the pillar of truth is a place where god wants to dwell and Christ wants to be glorified. And so you will not build it according to your pattern, according to his pattern, according to her pattern. You'll build it according to the pattern that God himself reveals. Let's look at verse 14. 
and look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee where in the mount uh, can, can you think about uh, people who are building denominations and churches and assemblies and fellowships and religious clubs and societies today they have never gone to the mount of god they have never heard from god and when people have lived all their lives in the valley and they have never seen the glory of god the majesty of god they have never heard the voice of god from heaven and there is no witness of the spirit in their hearts in their lives and they're just living a secular life a kind of um kind of life and they have never seen they have never heard the voice of the lord they have never been to the mountain top where god will take hold of their lives and change and turn and transform them and then they want to build a sanctuary for the lord god said no if you're going to build a sanctuary a place of habitation for the almighty god come to the mount and as god has brought you here thank god for pastors and preachers and ministers of god who are here this is the mount of transfiguration where the lord has brought you and you don't want to just stay in the hostel in the halls in the cafeteria or anywhere where god is revealing to us something on the mount and if you watch people that you know they just go through religious gimmicks and they do not have the experience on the mount whenever they go to build everything they build god says i don't accept that that's your pattern give me the divine pattern show me that divine pattern and you find it on the mountain by the way do you remember aaron did aaron go to the mount no what did he do for the house of god for the people of god he modeled everything up and said, These be thy gods that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Can you blame him? It's not been to the mount. And can you tell who was with Moses when he went to the mount? His name is Joshua. Do you understand then why God committed the coming of the children of Israel into the land of Canaan? Because that man, he was on the mount. I'm going to show you something else. James, John, and Peter. The Lord Jesus Christ had 12 disciples very close to him. And then he was going to the mount of transfiguration. Who did he take with him? Those three people. Peter, James, and John. Was Judas there? Ah, no wonder that man couldn't build a divine pattern. And when you come to the Acts of the Apostles, and you find the day of Pentecost, and they said somebody rose up, and he said, men and brethren, children of Israel, hear my word. This is that which was prophesied by Joel. And he began to relate to them the word of the prophet and made interpretation. Then said, you are going to give your life to the Lord. And 3,000 people gave their lives to the Lord that same day. Who was that? That man was at the mount of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is when you go to the mount and God shows you and reveals to you and he says, this is my pattern that's the only time you can really build something for the lord that's why god took moses to the mount and then he showed him and he said you will build according to the pattern i showed you on the mount i'm looking at uh, exodus chapter 24 exodus 24 i'm reading from verse 12 and i want you to find out and look at all the time the mount appears here and so you'll find where God himself revealed the pattern, the model, unto this man of God, Moses. And then every time he kept on reminding him, he said, Moses, remember what you saw on the mount. And now as we're going back to the children of Israel, make sure you build everything according to that pattern. In Exodus 25 verse 12, and the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there and i will give the tables of stone and a law and commandments which i have written that thou mayest teach them 
You'll not teach out of your mind, out of your brain, out of your memory, whatever you remember. I'm going to give you the commandments. And those commandments are going to teach unto those people. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and all are with you. If any man have any matter to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up, where again? Into the mount. And a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day. And he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount. In the eyes of the children of Israel, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount. How many days and nights? Forty days and forty nights. And God gave him the pattern. That was chapter 24. And then in chapter 25, said Moses, remember what you saw. Remember what you heard. Remember what I showed you. As you come to this conference and then you are going back to the local churches when we finish, you remember what you've heard. You remember what you have seen. And you look at the pattern very closely here. And then when you go back, make sure you build a sanctuary for the Lord, a temple for the Lord. And you build that according to the divine pattern that you saw on the mount. In Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 8, and I'm reading here from verse, from verse 5, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, says he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Again, you see here in the New Testament, the pattern you follow and the things you build must be according to what the Lord Almighty God himself has revealed, has shown, painted in your mind. You can see it, what he showed you on the mount. The divine pattern for new life in Christ. I'm going to talk about three things. Number one, the features, the features of new life in Christ. The features of new life in Christ. Number two, faith for new life in Christ. Faith for new life in Christ. Number three, the fruit of new life in Christ. The fruit of new life in Christ. We're looking at Matthew chapter 17. We're looking at the features now of the new life in Christ. Before I go on to this new life in Christ, do you know what the Bible calls the believer? The Bible calls the believer many names. Actually, the Bible says that you are the temple of God. And God says, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. They shall be my people and I will be their God. Paul the apostle asked the question. He said, know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost who dwells in you and you are not your own. Your body, your spirit belongs to God. And then he says in another place, he says the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? That means then we are the sanctuary we are talking about. The Old Testament is just an illustration. The sanctuary they built is just an illustration. The temple they built is an illustration. You now, you are the temple of God, the sanctuary of God, the tabernacle of God. He wants to live in you. And now he says, that temple of your life, that habitation of God that you carry about, that you must make sure that you build up that life, that temple, that sanctuary, according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mount. In Matthew chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 17. We're looking at it from verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, 
and bringest them up into an high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as, light, as the light and behold there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Tell me the next words. Hear ye him. You know what God did? He showed him the perfect pattern. And he said, Peter, you want to build three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus Christ came and tabernacled among us. That's John chapter 1 verse 14. Don't open, I've told you already. He sent him as the perfect tabernacle. He sent him as the pattern. And now he says, you don't need to build any other thing. Look at Jesus, my beloved son. Here is my beloved son. Hear ye him. That means then, if you're looking for the pattern, the pattern for your life. The divine pattern, God's pattern that he gave us from heaven for your sanctuary, for your temple, is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And now it says, hear ye him. Look at verse 8. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man. Tell me the next words. Except Jesus only. Jesus only. That's all they saw. When they opened their eyes, that's the pattern that they were given. I'm talking to you now, point number one, on the features of new life in Christ. We're looking at Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. You connect that with that Matthew chapter seventeen that I read to you now. Matthew chapter uh, Second Peter chapter one verse sixteen. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were high witnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You'll see here that Peter was referring to his experience on the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw the pattern there. He saw the model there. He saw the perfect example there. And he referred back to that and he said, we have not followed funnily, uh, cunningly devised fables. Then he said, and this voice, verse 18, which came from heaven, we heard and we, when we were with him in the holy mount. And so you see now the pattern showed in the mount. What pattern is that? 